after a disappointing finish to last week? No, I, I don't know. I guess we'll see where we end up. Yeah, it was a you know, decent lap and uh, not quite exactly what I was looking for, but obviously, um, you know, be a good starting spot. So that's important here. Have you gone back and watched the last research from last week's race? And if so, has your opinion changed or is it the same? About what? About the restart and whether Danny jumped it. My opinion's the same. So what do you do? Uh, do you do you feel like you know what the rule is, or nope. do you feel, no? It's not so, like anyone does at this point. So we how, did. <laughs> so how do you uh, approach it going forward? <clears throat> uh, I guess if you try to jump, don't be surprised if they penalize you. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I don't really understand. It's a it's a black and white rule. You go in, the, you get to the box, and you go. Um, I don't really understand what all the questions are about. You go before it, you should get penalized. So in other sports, sometimes in other sports, sometimes uh, referees they say swallow the whistle and allow the, the athletes to determine it themselves. Should there, you know, and there are rules written in that what this is what this is what, and, and sometimes that's let go. Is there ever a time where it's okay to swallow the whistle in this sport to let the athletes, let you guys decide it, or was that too agreed? I to don't it? really think it's a good comparison. I mean, okay. I think it, it's clear as day. It, it's not a question. You go before the line, it's a penalty. Um, there's ways you can't, there's no data in a football player to know, you know, some things are questionable. There's, there's, you know, ball and strike calls, but this isn't, that case is not, it's a black and white. It's a, you can or you can't call. So I don't really understand what the debate is all about. So you bitter still over last week or are you over it? No, it's water under the bridge. I mean, it's it's a race, it's over. It's, I was frustrated. Um, it's a aggravating to, you know, lead an entire race, dominate a race and then have it, you know, go away that way. Because, you know, I think that's like the fifth or sixth time it's happened at Richmond. So. You know, you just get aggravated and it just, it all piles on in a, in a short amount of time, you know, in just 10 or 15 minutes. And, you know, I've clearly lost my cool and did some things I'm probably not proud of, but, um, you know, you move on, you go to next week and you hope you can, uh, you know, come out on top and do a better job. Any conversations with NASCAR about how they reached their non-decision, if you will? Uh, no, I mean, I, I don't really, I've seen what was said. I read what they said and I heard what Elton Sawyer said that, you know, if it happened with, 50 to go or 100 to go or 300 to go they may have called it so it's it's clear as mud <laughs> so does there need to be like there's no, some people say put timing lines there so you know where somebody timing um, lines yeah put timing there lines, there. lines there's lines the restart box has a line in the front line no but line like a timing front. line that gives them like uh, immediate like okay we know this guy went five miles per hour faster and than the space car speed. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, is it so? Are we going to, if it's going to be that way, just say green, white, check, you can go whenever you want. And then we'll have, we'll do what we want to do. And then obviously the leader's going to go wherever he wants. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's hard to follow the rules. And then somebody breaks the rule and doesn't get in trouble for it. It's, it's ridiculous. Can you explain the Larson aspect to that last lap? Uh, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> I mean, he slid up into me and I mean, barely, barely got me in the side and one and two and I just, my, the, the lid popped off. <laughs> Denny said that you two talked, what was said? Yeah, it was, it's fine. He didn't do anything wrong. I just, yeah, like I said, it all just piled on really quickly and I lost my cool. It happens. Was it aggravating the, the pit crew situation? Those, those guys used to work with you and now you have a new group and, and just kind of on the money stop, you get beat. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it hurts. It's frustrating. Um, they're working their guts out, trying to fix it, trying to get better. Um, it's not an overnight process. So, you know, unfortunately it, um, you know, it, it cost us a race last weekend and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed going forward, we can get past that and, and do what we need to do. We're going to be in position to win a lot more races, but that's tough when you give them away, they never come back. You know, you never get them back. So it's uh, it's always frustrating. You've had such a good start to this season, leading the points at or near the top of every statistical category. Have the wins become so important in this game that if you don't have at least one in the win column, you kind of tend to overlook all the other great things that you've done? I mean, it's a balance, right? You want to be, you don't want to be win a race and then have a couple bad weeks. You want to balance out that consistency, but you got to add wins in there. So, yeah, I mean, this deal is all about 
bonus points for the playoffs and they're critical, you know, so obviously 15 for winning the points is a big deal, but you got to have wins on top of that as well. So hopefully we can, yeah, I mean, listen, I feel like we've had top three to five cars every single race this year and we're going to win some races. It's just um, it's frustrating when you dominate and they get away, but um, not losing sight of the big picture where we feel really good about our team and where we're at. And, um, you know, we want to keep racking up, you know, top fives if we can and, um, and some stage wins as well. You 